Okay, so this is my second and most likely final review of Ostefko's channel. Not because of anything wrong with her or any situation I have with her, but because I don't want to badger the situation. And this is her wave that she created. And, you know, we need to give her space to grow her channel. I wanted to use her once again as an avatar and a conversation piece to have a larger conversation about class, race, gender in America. And what does it mean to be a black woman in an anti-black society when what it has meant to be a woman traditionally in America, it has meant whiteness, white womanness. That's not a word, but I made it up, <laughs> right? So that's what it has traditionally meant. And can black women elevate themselves into that position simply off of education and being respectable and subscribing to moral tenets of femininity in America? It may sound like I'm doing too much, but I'm really not. All of these things matter, right? What does it mean to be a black woman in the 21st century? with the history of America, right? I would argue the model that American women, not just black women, but other women of color also are attempting to achieve is top 20% white woman status. And I meant it exactly how I said it. The top 20% white woman is the goal for women in America, including not top 20% white women. So the white women that are not in that position. That's the goal. Now, unlike those bottom 80% white women who are still white, what does that mean for black women? Right? What does that mean for black women in their politics? What does that mean for black women economically? What does that mean for black women socially? Right? Especially, once again, for a group of women that are only 50 years removed, give or take a year or two, out of Jim Crow. 150 plus years out of slavery. And even if you're from the continent or from the Caribbean, you're about 70 or so years removed from colonialization. Can your education... And your moral standing in this society elevates you to that position. And for those of you that would argue that it should be your men elevating you to that position, not anymore. Not in the 21st century. That's not the world we live in. Second wave feminism, and I'm not railing against women or feminists, but second wave feminism dealt a death knell to that type of way of thinking about womanhood and manhood that's not men's role anymore writ large not just black men but men in in general so this is this is kind of what black women find themselves in they not they never got to be miss ann in mass right they never got to be becky in mass they never got to be karen in mass so what does that mean when you deal with the world we're living in in 2021 women have been going to college more than men since the early to mid 80s now they're getting higher degrees than men this is women across the board not just black women right so what does that mean for our notions of dating up and marrying up right not just for black men but for black women right what does that mean when more and more women, a critical mass of women, are graduating with advanced degrees, but yet our society still has, has excuse me, our society still has notions of hypergamy inbuilt in both men and women? Which hypergamy mostly speaks is, is, is an Indian caste system about class. Right, But the way we use it in this space, it, it mainly has to do with income. But, you know, we'll, ju we'll just throw that word in there. How do all of these things play out? And I think Ostefko's life 
is an example of how all these things play out. Right? So, we can expound on her life and have a larger conversation about class, right? Aspirationalism. We can have a larger conversation about what it means to be a black man in this society, what it means to be a black woman in this society, and understand what it means to be a woman in America. Historically, right? So to be a black woman in America and take on all the trappings and accoutrement of womanhood, of femininity, what does that mean in context of American history? Not just world history, people want to go back 5,000 years, right, to Egypt. No, 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 no. Starting in America, what has it traditionally meant to be a woman? Right? What's looking back at you in the mirror? What are your wants and desires, your true wants and desires as a black woman in America? Once again, I would argue Ostepko's life is a exemplary of that. I said in the previous video about her channel, marriage is at a 150 year low in America. And I think that's one of the major reasons is because we're bumping up against patriarchal notions of manhood and, and womanhood mixed with this modern era kind of stripping men and women of the ability for women to play in that and for men to play in that. Writ large, not just black people. Now, when you add race into it, oh, you're dealing with a whole different monster now. See, your teachers and professors were not having this conversation with you. Many of your family members and friends are not having this conversation. Right? I'll, I'll um, bring this into the mix also. What the social designers didn't factor in is that they were going to socialize young men. And when I say young, read 40 and under. So millennials and Gen Z. They were going to socialize young men. To be women's helpmate. I've had this conversation with BGS. Right? But. You socialize men to be women's helpmate. But you don't socialize women to accept that. That's one of the major things we're getting into conflict with. And it's very hard for our society to address that. It's very difficult for our society to address. All right. The young men have been socialized to not be jealous or resentful about being in a relationship with a woman of means and that might have some some social power, some social standing in her community. That's not the issue. The issue is the women don't want that role when it comes to their in their immediate relationships, their intimate relationships with men. Their romantic excuse me, their romantic relationships with men. We have a problem now. And this is going to become something, it's going to exacerbate. This is going to be an issue. It's already an issue. We have not socialized women for this newfound position they find themselves in. They reject the notion of Potentially being the breadwinner by 10, 15, 20, 30, 40,000 dollars, 50,000 dollars. So now we, we're getting into the conversation of musical chairs. If more women have been graduating from college than men for the past 30 plus years, almost 40 years. And now they're graduating with more advanced degrees, but they still want to marry up. What happens when you are the up ladies? That does not mean, by the way, that there are more women making more money than men. Not yet, anyway. But it does mean a critical mass of women are making more money than the average man.
in America. And so what do those women do? Do they double, triple, quadruple, quintuple up on air quotes high value men? Do they date and marry other women? How does this work? Especially in a society that's stripping gender gender roles in the first place and social norms. Maybe this is why everyone's freestyling. It's not like the 1970s or 60s or 50s where you slot in, where there was a system built for you to meet a, your significant other, generally of your same class. So once again, O. Stefko finds herself in a very interesting position. And when we factor in race, once again, for, according to her and her channel, she grew up in somewhat diverse neighborhoods. Like I said on the other channel, being black, but not necessarily growing up with black people, but then also not having the automatic in into non-black spaces. That's what a lot of suburban black people, black people are dealing with. A lot of suburban black people are dealing with that. It's even more difficult for normal looking, average looking black women in those spaces. Right? This kind of does a disservice to some of our notions of dating and marrying outside your race and how easy it is. Ostefko is like the perfect case study for so much of the conversation that have been going on between black men and black women over the past decade or so online. Because the, the, she's a she's a chocolate sister, grew up in the burbs, around black and non-black people, upwardly mobile, educated, but is struggling in the romantic world, in the love world, in the marriage world, in the dating world. As I said in the last video... Is she the new normal? Before we even factor in race, is she the new normal? Now when we factor in race, is she the new normal? And what does that mean? And excuse my background, I am using my phone. What does that mean for black people writ large, black women specifically? How does this work? Especially if we want men that we want heterosexual relationships where men still earn more and have a higher status than their female counterparts in a world where that's removing those tools and I'm not going to double back on what I said before I'm closing right now I'm getting to the close how does this work? Ostefko is exemplary of the conversation we were having much of it was very contentious adversarial quite frankly Black people were using insults, demeaning each other, belittling each other under the guise of constructive criticism and tough love. It's really not that. You're just raging at your own people. Let's be honest. So I'll end it there. Y'all let me know what y'all think. How does race, class, gender play into Ostefko's story, black women writ large story, and black men? black men's story y'all let me know what y'all think i'll end it right there of course my phone screen is locking that's what i get for using my phone instead of a laptop and i'll end it right there all right y'all